Nah, I'm confident that I'm not going to be able to get any numbers off of this. I do think I see a ghost of a two, maybe, but that's it. So, uh, so much for cleaning this up. So, I'll we'll have to just check with the bearing suppliers and see if they still make this top. I think I remember seeing a listing for this type of bearing, this multi-component type of bearing. And then, of course, the other all alternative is whether or not this is bearing that will just fit this bore 1.560 and then of course we got 3.060 60, 60 thousandths over 3 inches uh, let me just check and see is that, is that the widest spot I believe it is. So I'm just going to quick eyeball here for now. Yeah. Yeah, 50. Yeah, 50. 55. Nope. It is closer to 60. Yeah. 60 thousandths over 3 inches. And what did I say this one was? This was sixty thousandths over one and a half inches. One point five sixty, three point oh six zero. Well, I did a little bit of research and not happy with what I found. I checked, checked. Uh, I checked a couple of the major manufacturers' websites like Timken and SKF bearings and uh, didn't even see any listings for this type of a bearing setup. Then I took the dimensions that I had and uh, tried to look for bearings, regular ball bearings that they had that would uh, you know, fit in this bore and fit that shaft and didn't come up with much. Came up with some that were kind of close, might be able to make something work, but um, nothing exact. It's not like there was a bushing on the end of that shaft there, so. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and reuse this. I just went, policed up all of my ball bearings that went flying. Well, I say all. This is what I was able to find in that pigsty over there on the floor. I'll uh, clean and sweep up some more. But for starters, I'm going to wash my balls. And uh, see how they look. So, just spray some of this goodness into a jar. Got them under a little bit of magnification and see if I can see any uh, severely damaged ones. Come here. Just rolling them around and seeing if I can see any that have any significant damage. And we do have this one here. Oops. That one's a little scored. The rest of them look pretty good, though. I wonder how many that accounts for. Let's see if I put this in. Will these actually just go running all over the floor if I do this? Let's see. Would help if I had the camera angle so you could see what I was doing. So judging what I'm looking at right here, if I had to take a guess, I would say I am currently missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight 
Question is, this was awfully sloppy before I took it apart. How many were missing? I'm really wishing that I hadn't had it all fall apart on me like that and go everywhere because when I go and find any other ones that are loose there, I'm going to wonder whether or not I've got them all picked up or were there some missing already. I'll go hunting. All right, good news is I found five more. Bad news is it still doesn't seem like it's enough. There's quite a gap in here. I was thinking about the sloppiness of the bearing. That may have been because of the problem where I think that that, that locking ring that loads this bearing was loose. In other words, if I bring this down on here and I keep the two halves together, you can see there's actually just a tiny bit of clearance there. If I put this together like this, this inner part no longer is all sloppy in there like it was. It acts more like it should. That cover that goes in here locks that down was almost flush with the top when I started. So I'm curious when I put this back together I tighten it down so that uh, it's preloaded to where I think is good. How it'll act. I sure would like to have. Sure would love to have a couple more of these little ball bearings to go in here. So I, I do think that this is supposed to be at least. Two more in there. I think there should be two more in there. I wonder how big these are. Well, this isn't a very scientific, accurate way of doing it, but I keep getting the same reading, which is 310 thousandths. All right, well. 0.3125 is 5 sixteenths. So the more I look at this, I think that's exactly what this is. I think these are 5 sixteenths. Because the needle's actually just past the 10. All right, so these are 5 sixteenths inch ball bearings. Well, I'll revisit the problem in this a little later. Um, what I'm thinking I want to do is, this bearing's gonna have to come off to be replaced, because this one is really trashed. Um, no amount of cleaning, I think, is gonna take care of this one. And what I'm thinking is, if I'm gonna trash this bearing anyways, maybe I'll try and break it apart and see if the balls in there, if any of them are the right size, maybe I can actually rob some the balls out of this one to fix the missing ones here. I also wanted to get a number off of it. I don't see a number. This style of bearing, I'm pretty sure should have a number on it. I don't see one anywhere on here, so it must be on the back side. I could use my inspection mirror and try and figure it out, but it's got to come off anyways. Um, here is where I was using, <laughs> now I could see the error in my ways. I was using the cold chisel. I was trying to pound this out and uh, I actually deform this a little bit, so that's going to make it kind of interesting when I go to get this off. I might have to try and grind this a little bit here. Um, the problem is I can't fit this between the supports on, the, on my press. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this shaft from the pulley because that sure looks to me like this pulley is just, this pulley is pressed onto this shaft right here. So I think I can uh, push this right out from the top. So give it a light press, see what happens. All right, so I could sit this right on top. It's pretty well supported by the uh, plates that come with the press. And I actually use one of my many pieces of scrap that I keep over here for pushing and it's actually 
worked out perfectly. I didn't even have to reset the press from the last time I used it to a different height. What I was talking about is, I can't see it, but these girders right here, the space between them is only about that wide. So I can't get the pulley uh, down in, in between there. So let's just hope that this is not going to damage anything. I mean, it's, it's obvious to me that this is definitely a shaft that was made separate from the pulley. It's not a... Uh, top of that shaft is not perfectly flat. I'm trying to make sure I'm going to push on this as square as possible. Nothing to indicate that there was a uh, fastener or something there that was holding that on. You know what? I don't like it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to clean up this top edge really well and see, and make sure that I'm not missing something there. Because I sure as heck don't want to damage this pulley. All right. Well, I did clean up that uh, that area there and looked at it real closely, and I couldn't see anything. So it does look like the pulley's pressed onto the shaft. But I'm, I'm just so nervous about this very thin metal pulley getting damaged. So um, I'm going to try something different here. I'm rethinking my whole setup here, and this is what I came up with. The start is I'm going to move these plates even closer together. So that, what I've basically got is I've got these plates right here going across that are going to bridge it. Ideally, I wish I had two that were exactly the same thickness. This one's kind of buggered up from me practicing running beads on it. <laughs> but I don't have a lot of really thick pieces of stock that are identical in size to use. So hopefully I'll be able to exert enough pressing force on this to pop that shaft out of that bearing before these plates decide to try and bend. So let's see. No damage. <laughs> 